This is Sinon, a community on the edge of Arusha, the second largest city in Tanzania. It seems unremarkable, suffering the same levels of poverty and disease as most others in the city. But there are two sites in this area that mark it out from all the rest. This is one, the tip where the entire city's waste is just dumped. And this is the other, a school where nothing is wasted and everything is recycled. Tips like this, of course, can be found all over the world and they reflect a common lack of concern for the environment. Schools like this, however, are few and far between on any continent, but they demonstrate what can be done to promote sustainability and self-sufficiency. Here it's not just the food that's home produced, so is the energy, which comes from a very natural gas. It's better for the environment and the purse. Economics have been yeah, a big part of my drive, but also the environment. Uh, yes, the two go together. We have to find ways of being more resourceful, less wasteful, and if small schools can do it, families, individuals, it boils down to everyone contributing. The Edmund Rice Sinon Secondary School lies underneath Mount Meru, the fourth highest mountain in Africa. It takes children from the city and from the surrounding Maasai villages. And it's villages like this one that are being hit hardest by climate change through water shortages and failed harvests. Seasonal rain is bringing some relief to the area, but still no water to this village. Mm. So he would say more than 10 years, the rain has decreased. Um, Cows have died as a result because of the uh, lack of rain. Um, just the general standard is, of living is very difficult. More than 10 years now. Who does he blame for the drought? It's just changing the weather. He doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't blame the West, then. doesn't blame no, Europe. No, blame no America. concept of the wider world, really, no. No. to blame, no. Frank O'Shea, or Brother Frank, is a member of a Catholic order called the Christian Brothers, which carries out its mission to bring education to deprived areas in 40 countries. He arrived in Tanzania 11 years ago, when the school was little more than a few huts and a field. He soon realised he would need to offer more than education. He would also have to provide food and shelter. And that meant the school had to find an income and new ways of saving money by cutting out waste. Don't waste anything, even if it means using it more than once. Um, we have certainly a record here of uh, being able to use a resource more than once. I just keep asking, does it have to be this way? Can't it be done any better? And then from there, search and take a few risks. And uh, so I suppose anybody in any situation, in any educational institution, should be asking that question. Uh, what's going on here? Is it just how it is done? Is that the only way? Are there alternatives? There are now classrooms and workshops for 1,000 pupils and shelters for half of them who board rather than walk up to 30 kilometres a day to and from school and their outlying villages. Frank's been driven by his zeal and desire to give every child the chance of education. He's relied on support from his religious order and he's received quite a lot of help from termites. This is the school's termite mound. I discovered it makes good um, building material. The termites are bringing the soil down from very deep down and it's very sandy. Some of them go down as far as 30 feet, big area. This one is not as big, um, but you could go down 30 feet and get enough bricks to build a house. Basically, you're using this instead of uh, sand and cement? Mm. Well, you do add some cement to, to help it. One bag for 200 bricks. As the school grew, Frank's priority was water. There are two rainy seasons, if they come at all, but it's hardly practical to build tanks big enough to collect water for half a year. So the school found a donor to fund a borehole which tapped into a stream running deep underground from Mount Meru. 
The water supply also means the school can irrigate 10 acres of nearby fields. On one side, they're used to grow maize, and on the other, cabbages and beans. Does it taste better because you've helped to grow it and pick it? No, this is much better than those which are going to buy it from street or shops. Why is it much better? Because the way we are keeping it, we are keeping it better than those who are keeping them. Just when they plant them, they're not care of them, but as we are care of them. Nothing is wasted. The water from this shower and laundry block is collected in a tank and pumped back to supply a playing field. Good exercise. Good exercise. You enjoying it? I am enjoying it because I'm, I'm the muscles. You want big muscles? Yes. You're going to get them. Water used for washing up is being diverted to create a pond and swamp for science lessons. In biology, we need to specifically deal with frogs. And uh, these frogs, students have to see them physically. And not only that, they need also to do a practical in dissecting, to see different systems. And you find that maybe when you are doing that, the frogs are nowhere to be seen. The school also teaches animal husbandry. It keeps a herd of 15 cows, which produces between 80 and 100 litres of milk a day. Just over half the yield is sold, and the rest is turned into semi-skim milk and cream for the pupils. The school bull is hired out to bring in more money. And the cattle produce something else that's put to good use. It's the ultimate in waste not, want not. Their slurry is channeled into a 50 cubic metre underground chamber, or biodigester. And it's supplemented by what's deposited in these toilets. We haven't got the cows trained enough to go into an area where they can squat, so we have to manually uh, gather it up and put it here. From here, it goes into a very large biodigester, and there is the top. It's like an igloo, so it's about uh, four metres deep and a five metre diameter, and big thing, yeah, it's huge. How much gas is in here depends on the quality of the manure that you have put in there. I'm ignorant in these matters. I thought slurry is slurry. I didn't know there was different qualities. Oh, well, if it was sitting outside, and methane is escaping anyway, so it's better to go straight from the cow into there. As the methane, or biogas, builds up in the chamber, slurry is forced into three smaller underground chambers, and from these it overflows into the open air. Slurry pools are not the sort of thing usually found at school, but this one is apparently perfectly safe. And in the chamber it's fully anaerobic and therefore what comes out is clean of um, bacteria. I had it tested at the hospital and they couldn't find any traces of amoeba or whatever. Pressure inside the main chamber pushes the gas into three kitchens, including this one which feeds the recently opened sixth form centre. Lunch is prepared for all 1,000 pupils. Breakfast and dinner is also provided for the boarders. Members of staff can share the meals, and the energy source can come as something of a surprise to new arrivals. Very interesting. I didn't know that. <laughs> That's pretty good. Is that going to put you off your dinner? Uh, not really, no. <laughs> gas is gas, I suppose. <laughs> It doesn't matter how it's cooked, as long as it's cooked and it's tasty. It's a good idea because it is the energy which is not cost food. Yeah. Not expensive. Not expensive. Pupils were told from the outset the part they were playing in cooking their food. Like, downplayed it and made a joke of it and it was accepted then. It's never been an issue. What did you say? Oh, well, if your food is not cooked, get going. <laughs> Make some more. <laughs> the school relies on volunteers, bringing their skills in return for accommodation and food. And you need to know how to recognise when something is paramagnetic or diamagnetic, OK? I'm surprised how advanced they are compared to the rest of us and the rest of the world. They're far beyond us with recycling and reusing and not wasting things is the big thing here. And it's just an education for us all. So you think that schools in the UK could learn from schools like There's this no one? No doubt. Put up some sentences on the board. If you don't understand the words, look, use your dictionaries to look them up, the meaning. 
we take so much for granted at home that and everything is seen as disposable. Whereas here, I think everything's seen as a commodity, no matter what it is, how small it is, it's seen as something that you can use. Whereas at home, we take it for granted paper, we take for granted where our food comes from, it just arrives, um, especially in schools. Um, I know it's improving all the time in relation to recycling, but here it's very much more a necessity rather than a lifestyle choice. The school once grew 50% of its own food, and despite doubling in size and taking in borders, it still produces 20% of its needs. Maize is bought and stored in silos, or rather in shipping containers turned on their ends. And here the biogas has another essential use, killing weevils. The methane and carbon dioxide is going into the container, expelling oxygen, and therefore it suffocates any weevils. It's not, there's no poison involved, it's not harmful, it's just suffocating them by removing oxygen and replacing it with carbon dioxide and methane. The point of her silo is that we can buy during the harvest time and the price is very low. If we can store it, then we can use it as the year goes by. Another byproduct also provides fuel, sawdust. It goes straight from the workshop to this stove used to prepare breakfast. It's an example of what a politician might call joined up thinking to maximise resources. But here it's called common sense. There are many more examples around the school. If you need new instruments for the music department, then why not make what you can in the carpentry class? And if you're training pupils to become joiners, then why not produce stools and desks needed in new classrooms? If you've equipped a room with sewing machines, then why not rent it out after school to local people who have got the skills but not the equipment? If you're teaching husbandry, then why not produce the ingredients needed by the home economics class, which can then provide a few treats in between the meals of maize? And if you want to provide training in IT, then why pay for new computers when perfectly good ones are being thrown away by upgrade greedy consumers in the West? For what pupils actually do in a school, um, these are absolutely adequate. I even had a group of pupils last night um, doing some programming. And for simple programming tasks, they still look fine. Um, so there's no reason why schools in the UK couldn't recycle? No reason whatsoever. I'd say the only, the only weak link in the chain is probably the monitors. Second-hand monitors tend to kind of um, not have a great lifespan. I'd say these PCs have got maybe another four or five years in them. Um, and that will take them up to being about 12 years old, I think. The dump on the doorstep, a monument to global apathy and inaction, doesn't discourage the Christian brothers. The school will continue to show the rest of the country and the rest of the world the importance of reusing everything and wasting nothing, whatever it might be. It saves money and ultimately a lot more. These people are in their poverty, have very little, they're struggling anyway to survive. So they have very little resources to deal with change. What was that slogan? Uh, think globally, but act locally. And this is uh, uh, a responsibility of everyone.